Have you ever finished a watercolor painting and it ended up looking like this? Well, you can see I worked really hard on this one here. It's quite a big painting. This is a full half sheet of cotton watercolor paper. It's just 140 pound and I did stretch it, but I think because I was using gummed tape for the first time, it was probably operator error, I'll be honest. And I didn't do a very good job stretching it. So as I was working on the painting, it was warping and buckling. The tape was coming undone. I personally wouldn't recommend the tape method if you're stretching your paper. Go with staples, those work so much better. I don't have that same issue when I stretch my paper with staples. So anyway, I ended up with a very warped painting. You can see it's just wavy all over the place, which isn't gonna look great if we frame it like this. So we're going to need to straighten it back out. By the way, my name is Emily and here on my channel we do watercolor tutorials, product reviews, and we just discuss all things watercolor. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button right now. So we're going to try this hack where you can actually iron your watercolor painting. I definitely only recommend this if you have high quality cotton watercolor paper. And I've personally never tried this before. So we're gonna see, is it a success or a fail? Whoa, of course I'm trying it on something that I spent hours on. Probably not a good idea. Maybe we should try a practice run on something a little smaller just to make sure that we don't totally burn our watercolor painting. Might actually be a smart idea before just jumping into something that we spent hours on, right? All right, so this one isn't as bent. You can see it's slightly warped, just a little bit, and it's one that I don't care quite as much about, so I'm gonna take this little unicorn. We're gonna try it on a small painting first. So I have my iron set to the hottest setting, which is cotton, and I have a pillowcase right here might want to use one that you're okay getting maybe a little bit of paint on it. And I'm going to slip my painting in between the two sides of the pillowcase. So it's right here. And we're going to take the iron. And I have the painting face down, by the way. I'm not sure that that really matters. But we're going to go up and down and sideways. And when you're ironing anything, it's so important not to spend too much time in one spot. Or you could singe or scorch it. We're using firm pressure and just going back and forth. All right, let's see if it worked with our small painting here. I still see a tiny bit of warping, but so far there's no damage to the painting. So that's mostly what we're looking for here. So I feel safe enough to go ahead and try this now on the larger painting. This painting was just a fun project I did over the holidays. This is my daughter, Ansley. She looks about 12. She's actually only eight, but something about wearing a white dress with her hair down makes her look so much older. All right, we're gonna slip this inside of the pillowcase. And again, I'm gonna have it face down and just iron the back side of the painting. We'll just slip it right in there. And the painting's actually a little wider than my ironing board. So I may have to move it a little bit as I work, but here we go. You can hear it buckling. There was so much warp in it while I was working because I used a ton of water. And this is gonna take me a bit longer than that small painting. Obviously a lot more surface area here. I'm gonna work on this top edge, which is really warped. So I'm gonna pull this forward a little bit so there's more space on my ironing board. And we're just gonna work on this edge for a little bit. I can tell it's starting to flatten out a bit, but we've been working on it for a while. So I think 45 seconds wasn't quite enough. And of course it depends on how warped your painting is. Put some arm into it. I feel like a 50s housewife right now. Just need my pearls. All right, we're gonna flip this around and now work on the other side. It's definitely feeling flatter. I think the goal here is just to get it flat enough so that when you frame it under a heavy piece of glass, there won't be any visible warping. Framing it under glass will definitely help. All right, let's see how we're doing here. I think I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. I can still feel a tiny bit of warping, so I'm just gonna spend a couple more minutes on it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it perfectly flat, but it's already so much better, I can tell. Let's see how we did. 
awesome wow look at that improvement that is so much better than it was when we started we still see some waves in it but if you compare these before and after what a difference I think that made a huge improvement on the overall painting and that will make it so much easier to frame so now it actually stays nice and upright and flat and I think it will look really lovely in a frame well friends I've always been curious about this hack and I'm so delighted to discover that it definitely works I will definitely be using this next time I have a painting that turned out a lot more warped than I was hoping for. A great way to avoid your paper warping in the first place is to work on watercolor blocks. So if you're doing a smaller painting, blocks are such a great solution. A block is simply paper that's already been sized and glued down on all of the sides except for this one little corner and that makes it easier to remove the paper when you're done, but it stays nice and flush the whole time. So most of the time I work on blocks like this, but in the case of a half sheet, this painting was so large that I didn't have a block that size, so I had to stretch it. If you wanna learn more about how to properly stretch your watercolor paintings, check out this video. I do use staples most of the time and that works so much better. The tape just tends to come undone on the gator board as I discovered with this experiment, so I did have to iron it. I'm right here learning right along with you. If you're brand new to watercolor, be sure to download my watercolor jumpstart guide. It's free. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Check out this next video all about how to create soft edges in watercolor and I'll see you there.